so uh, students uh, we are going to start with the session now uh, today's session is on microcontrollers and we have with us mr pavan ganraj uh, mr pavan is the team lead at lema labs and without any further delay pavan sir i invite you to take over thank you thank you uh, just give me two minutes i'll just share my screen all right and from there we can start okay uh good morning guys uh this is pavan uh going to take a session on microcontrollers now uh, before we start uh, i would like to just introduce myself uh i completed my uh, electronics and communication engineering from kcg college of technology in, to, in the year 2013 it's in chennai uh i during my college days i was actively involved in a lot of product development uh, building a lot of projects and one of one of the prototypes that i have built uh, was funded by dst department of science and technology uh, which is a med alarm uh, basically a device which uh, reminds old people how to start uh, how to take when to take medicines uh, and so on uh, and i had a few publications in my name uh, one of them uh, is publication i triple explore currently i uh, i'm a part of lema labs for the past 3 years uh i have also uh, i mean uh, i have trained around 1000 students in robotics and uh currently uh, what uh, what i'm doing is taking care of operations and robotics development team so we train students in robotics and various systems basically on how to use microcontrollers and so on uh now to give you a brief view about lema labs who we are and what we are trying to do uh Uh, this basically just to get started about who's trying to talk to you and what are we trying to achieve in the session. Okay, uh, I'll not take a long time. I'll just come uh, short, give you a small introduction. Now, back in 2010, uh, our team uh, from IIT Madras are represented in India in international aerial robotics competition. <laughs> Now, this competition is one of the elite robotics competition in the world. So, what happens in the competition is uh, every year they give you a uh, uh, problem statement which is not solved in the industry uh, and students from different colleges <coughs> come together and try solving the issue uh, problem now if a person doesn't if a team doesn't solve the problem in a particular year then the next consecutive year the same problem statement is given and the prize money is increased so this happens over a period of time for until the problem is solved now our team was the first team that actually represented india in aerial robotics competition and we got uh, we got one of the very good performing uh, performance in the competition and when we came back to india what happened is uh, we were invited for a lot of guest lectures in colleges and while on interacting with people uh, one thing that we realized or we understood is a lot of engineering students uh, in the in the universities are uh, very well versed with respect to theory uh, but something that they're not very good at is uh trying to build something hands on so if I, if i give you if i tell you uh uh i give you a test to write now and uh, i tell you find out what is the problem in the the tube light is not working so find out what's the problem that you play uh or the switchboard is not working can you go check it out uh how many of you can how do you have the confidence to do that can i see a show of hands so imagine i give you a uh, a uh, scrooter a tester and i tell you go to the switchboard and find out what is the issue there i mean find out what any you have any problems at can uh, how many of you are confident that you can actually go take a screwdriver go open it find out what is the problem there and find out why the tube plate is not working can i see a show of hands uh are the, are you am i audible <coughs> yeah uh can i see a show of hands for people who are actually following me right now okay uh it's fine so let me continue uh so back in the day one what we one thing that we realize is our students are really good at theoretical knowledge but uh they do not they lack the experience uh, even when it comes to practical exposure so something that we want to do is change the way uh i mean or uh help 
engineering students learn technology better by working on them from scratch. And that's why we started uh, Lemma Labs. Uh, we founded Lemma Labs in 2010 uh, with an aim to empower students in, by learning, uh, teaching them emerging technologies. Emerging technologies like robotics, embedded systems, machine learning, and things like that. Now, uh, there are three reasons why we learn, uh, why we run Lemma Labs. One thing is we want, we want students to dream big. Uh, we want, we do not want people to just tell, okay, after I want to go to engineering and after that I want to get a good IT job uh, and then I want to get settled in life. So we do not want you to restrict and only to that. What we want to do is we want people to become entrepreneurs. We want people to work on technology and make something creative of it. So that's something which we want to do. Next thing is we want, as I told you earlier, we want people to learn about new technologies. Uh, we want people to start working hands-on, so you do not have to be afraid of working on uh, technology hands-on. And last thing is we have a lot of affiliation with a lot of colleges here in Chennai. Our aim is to create a culture of innovation in the college, so in that what happens is we uh, students, engineering students can innovate a lot of projects, come up with a lot of innovations which will actually cheer, give back to the society. So these are the three main reasons that we run Lemma Labs. Now, so that was a quick introduction about who, who, who is talking to you, that's me, and whom I represent Lemma Labs. Uh, now, I, I was given a session, I was asked to take a session on microcontroller, and one thing that uh, someone uh, who, who had uh, contacted me told me uh, is, uh, every one of you are uh, familiar with microcontrollers, uh, you are familiar with the theoretical knowledge, you have gone through, uh, so you have read over the subjects in, uh, in, in your regular curriculum. So now, one thing I was requested to do is, uh, any issues? <coughs> no, so you may continue. Okay, uh, fine. So uh, one, th uh, one thing I was asked to do is uh, focus on uh, the applications of microcontroller and where it is used in the industry and what it takes for a person to, I mean, what are the career opportunities there? And with a few uh, few illustrations about how microcontroller works. So what I'm going to do is I'll just start with what is a microcontroller. I would expect uh, a few answers just so, just to see that, okay, uh, you are following me. And after that, I will also give a small idea about where microcontroller is used, uh, what, how, how it's used in the industry, the technology, the I mean, amazing things are actually microcontroller powerful of. And followed by that, I will also look at, I will also tell you about what uh, what are the career opportunities in ML systems, which is, uh, where, uh, which is where microcontrollers are used here, yeah, predominantly. Now, to start with, uh, can I know what are the years, uh, years students who are going to be, uh, are a part of the session? Which year students are part of the session? Samad, uh, uh, they are from second year and third year. So I assume that they have uh, they have some idea about my controls, right? Yes, sir, they do. Okay. So now, uh, to start with, can someone uh, from any college or uh, just one on college, one on person, just tell me what is a microcontroller? What do you know about a microcontroller? I request someone from uh, SV Jain or Amal Jyoti to come near the screen and uh, just talk about microcontrollers. Just one small line about what is a microcontroller. <coughs> or SB Gen. You need not be very correct. Just whatever you know. I, I'll anyway give you some, some idea. Can we have someone near the screen? Or oh, you may also put it in the chat box. Yeah, that will be actually helpful. Okay, I've got... I think we have a volunteer, right? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, do we have any volunteer or shall I proceed? Just two minutes, sir. Okay. Okay, I got an answer from someone saying uh, it's a small computer uh, or a simple integrated system. Can I have someone else? Someone, I think someone is standing, having all hardware, hardware components. Okay. Uh, fine. So this is from SBJ uh, Institute of Technology. I also can see someone near the screen uh, trying to tell me some answer. Okay, fine. Uh, shall we continue? Yes, sir, we can continue. Okay, so now, uh, so the answer that I've got, it, it is a small computer or a single integrated system containing all hardware components. Uh, great. Uh, so this is pretty much uh, what's the answer for a microcontroller. So microcontroller is nothing but it's a, it has a processing unit and it has uh, peripheral devices. So Peripheral devices are hardware components actually, but uh, they are not switches and LEDs, but these are inbuilt into the microcontroller system. So these are input, so ports through which you can access inputs, ports through which you can access output. So those things I'll be talking in, gen in general, in, sorry, in detail a little later. So a microcontroller is a processing unit which has peripheral devices inbuilt into a single system. Okay, but that's something that you also might have come across is microprocessor. Now the microprocessor is gen is only the micro is only the processing unit, and in a microprocessor you have to attach all peripheral devices externally to it. A small example is your computer where you have a microprocessor, and then you if you need RAM you need to attach your RAM. If you need uh, you any memory anything that you want to attach you need to attach externally to it. Whereas in a microcontroller everything is inbuilt in it. Okay, great. So now. Uh, there are a lot of microcontrollers available in the market and something that pretty much a lot of you might be familiar with. Uh, so as I was telling earlier, this is your microcontroller. Uh, it has your CPU, your RAM, ROM, input output ports, timer, serial port, everything is inbuilt into the single IC. Okay, so this is pretty much what is a microcontroller. This is your microcontroller and whatever is into, inside your big CPU, including your memory devices, everything is inbuilt into the single IC. And that makes the entire IC a little powerful IC. Okay, there are a lot of restrictions, few restrictions to it, but in uh, but in spite of these restrictions, it, it has a lot of, it has a very, it is a very powerful device. Okay, now a lot of you should have been familiar with uh, Intel eight eight zero five one. Yes, this is something which you would have been learning in your regular curriculums. There are a lot of other uh, microcontrollers also available. Atmel, Atmel has a lot of microcontrollers available. Microchip is another company which produces a lot of microcontrollers. Intel A051 is pretty much the most fundamental, uh, most uh, famous microcontrollers, and it has been genuinely used for 
in, in a lot of applications. Great. I'm right now getting an answer saying it's a microprocessor with RAM clock uh, making it standalone. Exactly. That is what I've been trying to say. So that is your microprocessor, a microcontroller. Okay. Whereas your microprocessor is something which is standalone. You have to attach all RAM, ROM, clock, and all these things externally to it. Okay. Now, uh, so now wh why are we using a microcontroller? Now I told you what is a microcontroller and something that you guys are familiar with is your H8051, which is used, which you learn in your regular curriculums. Now, why do we use a microcontroller? That's something which is a really important question that you have to answer. Now, <coughs> what, one of the main reasons that we use a microcontroller from the name itself, you can find out it's to control. Okay. It's a device that's used to control. Now, con to control what is a question. Now, if you need to, you can control any devices that you want. You can control your motors, you can control switches, you can control your fans, you can control anything that you want. Uh, you can use you can use your microcontroller to control. Okay, so that is pretty much about your microcontroller. It's a small device which has all peripheral devices inbuilt to it, and it's it's a powerful device which can use which can be used to control a lot of a lot of things. Now, when you use a microcontroller, when you come across a microcontroller, something that you need to know is about peripherals. Now, I was talking peripherals inbuilt into it, peripherals inbuilt into it. Now, a few peripherals that you'll be, you have to know for sure in a microcontroller. The first one is your I.O. ports. Now, I.O. ports, it's nothing but input-output ports. Okay. Now, input-output ports, is these, these are the ports that are present in your microcontroller through which you can give input to the microcontroller and you can also take outputs from your microcontroller. So this is your IO ports. Okay. Now something that uh, you might be familiar with uh, in your regular curriculum is you, you should have come across a term called registers. Now registers is something uh, using which you can use a memory space. Yes. In your microcontroller. But it, these are something which you can use to access peripheral port, peripheral devices. So now if you use IO ports, the use of IO ports as I told earlier is to connect inputs and take outputs from them. Okay. Now, if you need to use these IO ports, for example, I need to connect an input as a switch. Okay. And I have to write a small program to my microcontroller. It's not, uh, you need not use the assembly language code, which you generally use in your labs, uh, or you also call it as op codes. Uh, that's something which is uh, pretty much you have to take a look at a, sheet, a, 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 a module or a book which has all the opcodes and then you have to copy it and put it here. You can also use C programming, which is a high level programming, assembly level, level language is a low level programming. You can use a normal C programming in, by using these registers and you can access these ports. Okay. I'll talk about, a lot, about it a little later. But anyway, so IO ports are, are peripheral devices using which you can connect inputs, which can be either switch or it can be either any sensors. And the outputs that you take from your uh, microcontroller are also accessed using this. And outputs can be something like LEDs, motors, anything that you, uh, a speaker, a buzzer, anything that you want to take as output from the microcontroller is, can be accessed through your IO ports. Now, this is the most fundamental peripheral device if you're using a microcontroller, you have to be familiar with this micro uh, with IO ports if you need to use a microcontroller. Okay. Now, next thing that you need to know is about ADC. Okay. Now, before we start again, uh, let me ask you another question. I hope this time I get some answers very fast. Uh, now, what are the two types of signals? Can someone tell me the two main types of signals that you have? two main types of signals. You can put it in a chat box or if you want, you can come up to the screen and talk. What are the two types of signals? Great. So I've got an answer saying from Amal Jyoti College of Engineering, analog and digital. Exactly. So these are two types of signals that you have generally. Okay. Now, if you use a microcontroller, the microcontroller is a digital device. Okay, that means your microcontroller communicates with any other device using only digital signals. Okay, now digital signals has only highs and lows. That is either one or zero. There are only two values for a digital signal. Now, whereas analog signal is a continuously varying signal. Okay, now 
what happens is when you have your sensors you have a different types of sensors available uh, in the market you have ultrasonic sensor you have pressure sensor your temperature sensor you have a lot of different sensors in the market now if you need to use these sensors and uh, if you need to make sure they are connected to your microcontroller and if you need to make some sense out of it you have to make sure you use something called adcs okay now adc is another peripheral device in your microcontroller okay uh, now analog to digital conversion is pretty much what is adc now this is something which you have to you you have to learn about uh, or you have to start learning uh, reading about it if you need to attach sensors to your microcontrollers and if you need to make sense of them and it's pretty much very sim very simple just that you need to know a few concepts like sampling quantization approximation encoding which is uh, taught in your regular syllabuses okay now when you're using when you have to program these microcontrollers you have to know again you have to know something called registers okay now as i told you for input output ports you have a few set of registers similarly for adc you will have a different set of registers and you have to program these registers such that the sensor values can be convert analog values from the sensors can be converted to digital values and only these digital values can go into a microcontroller and only when that happens can you make sense of all these things and based on the sensor values you can make your uh, microcontroller give a particular output okay i'll give you a lot of interesting applications later uh, this this is just a small uh, view about what is a microcontroller and uh, what are things that you need to know for sure when you're working on a microcontroller now next thing is communication so first thing that we saw is input output ports second thing is analog to digital conversion and next thing that you need to know is about communication protocols now communication pro there are a lot of communication protocols that are parallel communication serial communication uh, a lot of communication protocols are available now one thing that uh, gen that is predominantly used in a lot of places is serial communication it's preferred because parallel communication you have a lot of wirings to do you have when when you pretty much assemble a microcontroller and a circuit if you use parallel communication you have hell lot of wires to go uh, give to the microcontroller and the and the circuit so instead of that what you use is you use a you use serial communication now serial communication a lot of a lot of different protocols something that the three main things that you need to know uh, with respect to industry or with respect to employability or with respect to doing uh, ability to do projects uh, there are three main protocols so one is U UART that is universal asynchronous receiver rece receiver transmission so UART is a very important protocol now you are when you come to you are uh, something that you need to know is uh, how to transmit data how to receive data all these things are done using registers i'm not going into detail more about this uh, because that itself is a pretty much very detailed topic uh, i would not like to bo bore you with that details right now uh, my aim is to give you some idea like what you need to know while working on a microcontroller so first thing is you are the second communication that pretty much is predominantly used is spa communication that is serial peripheral interface communication now serial peripheral interface you have uh, around five five wires that needs to be connected uh, and it also uses a set of registers these are all serial communication next thing that you need to know is i square c so these are the three things that you need to work on or you need to read about while using your communication now for a normal project for example if you are using a finally if you are doing a finally project or if you are doing any mini project which involves a communication protocol uh uart is actually sufficient for you to do most of the projects uh, that is universal synchronous uh, asynchronous trans receiver transmission now what what happens in uart is you have a receiver pin and you have a transmitter pin and what happens is every microcontroller will have only two pins or, or, apart from all the other pins you will have two pins for uart communication that is one is receiver pin the other is transmitter pin now what you need to do is you need to make sure when you're connecting your microcontroller to your laptop for example i need to control something from my laptop uh, you need to convert uh, if and you're connecting your uh, microcontroller through a usb port so usb is a different communication protocol and your microcontroller right now what you're using if you're connecting it to rx and tx that is using uh uart uart protocol so if you need to do convert these two what you need to do is you need to have a ttl logic or a level converter so level converters convert from usb to at uh, uart or they also convert from rs232 so rs232 to 232 are found in different laptop old laptops right now most of the laptops that you have 
can come only with USB. So pretty much right nowadays USB to UART is pretty much predominantly used. So and those are those come in ICs. Uh, they come as uh, breakout boards if uh, most in a lot of cases. Uh, so working on break uh, uh, USB to UART communication uh, device and learning about how do I make uh, UART communication happen is pretty much enough for you to start working on projects. Okay. Now, so these are three things that you need to know. First thing is I/O ports, uh, uh, using which you can connect inputs and outputs for, to your microcontroller. Second thing that you need to know is analog to digital conversions, because 95 percent of your hardware engineering projects will hundred percent use sensors. So most of your projects will be software. I mean, simulation and things like that. But uh, when you come to your hardware project, so when you want to show an output in terms of hardware, you need to have sensors. So pretty much a lot of people have temperature sensor, a lot of people have uh, pressure sensor, a lot of people have light sensor, like LDRs. So all these sensors have to be, if they have to get, if you have to get an output, uh, you need to connect them through an ADC. And for that, you need to know about analog to digital conversion. And for, if you need to use, uh, if you need to communicate from your lap mobile, uh, laptop, I mean, microcontroller to your mobile, or if you need to communicate from your microcontroller to your lap, laptop, you need to know about communication protocols. The fundamental thing that is enough for you to start doing projects is a UART protocol. Okay. So I hope that is really familiar, clear about what is a microcontroller and why do we use a microcontroller and what are the things that you need to know while starting to use a microcontroller. Okay. Now, something that's very good, going to be really interesting next is uh, I'll just minimize this. Okay. Something that uh, I would like to talk about which will actually fascinate you uh, a lot is the applications of a microcontroller. Now, microcontroller has different, different applications. Now, one thing that uh, you will be using, uh, I mean, the predominant, the three fields uh, that microcontroller is predominantly used. The first thing is robotics. Uh, it's it's a microcontroller is a predominantly, microcontroller and microprocessor are predominantly used devices for in robotics. Second thing is embedded systems. Embedded systems is a really, really vast field. I'll come to that. And that also you'll be using a lot of microcontrollers. And lastly, IoT. IoT is nothing but Internet of Things. Okay. I'll start with IoT because uh, that's something which is new in the industry, uh, which I, I hope a lot of people have some uh, understanding about what is an IoT. Now, I'll give you a small example. I'm not going to talk a lot about IoT because I assume you have seen it in earlier sessions. Now, how, where, uh, where is microcontroller used in IoT? That's something which I would like to cover. Now, first of all, what is IoT? Now, if you remember internet, internet, what we're using is uh, you, you connect people use over internet, right? So if I have to sit here and I have to connect it to you, I'm doing, or I'm connecting to you over internet. Now, that is what internet was so far used until the past few years. Now, all of a sudden, what happened is things things from different different places. For example, my fitness band. This is a fitness band. Okay, this is a fitness band. Now this is a thing. Okay, this band which is going to be on my wrist is going to communicate to my mobile. Is going to communicate to my mobile. Okay, this fitness band is going to communicate to this mobile over the internet, and that is Internet of Things. That means one. One item, one thing, one thing from your one particular place is going to communicate it to another thing that is somewhere else. It might be it not be near to it. It might be somewhere else also. And still they are going to be connected over internet and that is internet of things. Earlier we were connecting over people. Internet is connecting people. Now internet started connecting things. Okay. Now what happens in internet of things? Now this fitness band, if you see here, this is the main portion of the fitness band. It has a lot of sensors to it. And one of the most important thing that it has, it has, it has one of the parts that it has is a microcontroller. You won't believe it has a microcontroller. Now, what is the use of a microcontroller here? Now, the microcontroller here, what it will do is it will take data from the sensors. There are different sensors. So it helps me track my sleep. It helps me find out how many steps I walk. So all these things are taken from the sensors and given through your ADC it, and then given to your microcontroller. Okay. And the microcontroller takes all this data. And what it does is 
it sends data over a Bluetooth. I mean, right now this connects to my mobile over Bluetooth. So it transmits the data from the sensors over Bluetooth to my mobile. Now, what does mobile do? The mobile is connected to internet. Okay, so it tries to make sense of data from here. It carries all this data, makes sense of data, and then give it as an output in my mobile device. So that is pretty much Internet of Things. You connect things, and the core of that, when it comes to devices, you have microcontroller. Okay, that is how powerful a microcontroller is. Okay, now that's something interesting. That's something which I would love to actually work on. And I've seen a lot of people actually uh, in startups, a lot of people like were working on devices like this. Uh, now, the next most important thing is embedded systems. Okay, embedded systems is a really, really vast field. And embedded systems, you uh, there are a lot of applications. Now, start with a few applications of embedded systems is going to be a washing machine. Okay. Now, you won't believe there is a microcontroller inside your washing machine. Uh, I assume that you have already learned in your syllabus. But can someone tell me where in the washing machine is your microcontroller present? Okay. okay. Okay, so one of the answers that I've got is it's a uh, for timer for washing and drying, load calculation. Okay, great. Fine. So these are, I mean, so these are a few applications uh, of these are a few actions that a microcontroller than the washing machine does. Uh, for example, it calculates the weight of the clothes uh, by using load cell. Uh, that is a sensor. So that sensor sends information and it's given via ADC to your microcontroller. So that is one example. Timer again, you have to uh, for autonomous uh, automatic uh, washing machines. It automatically uh, there is automatic program that set for how how long to dry or how long to wash. There are few um, uh, semi-autonomous or uh, man. Uh, I mean uh, other uh, washing machines where you have to set how long you need to wash. So the input that you're giving, so you give it through a few keypads. Uh, there is an LCD that which displays the information. So all those things are using a microcontroller. Okay, so now a microcontroller is pretty much like it is being used in different different applications in which you're using. A small example is an MP3 player. Now MP3 player, no matter how small they are, they come with a microcontroller. Okay, and I have a few students of mine who uh, built a my MP3 player using a microcontroller. And it's, it's actually easy to build and you won't believe uh, the power of a microcontroller and like, okay, this is a microcontroller, this is an IC which uh, I learned in my engineering about how to use an off quotes and all. And all of a sudden, I'm going to build devices like MP3 player, washing machines, using a microcontroller is really fascinating. Uh, microcontroller also used in uh, cars, automobiles, uh, where they can, they're used to indi indicate the fuel level, they're used to indicate the pressure of the tires. So, a lot of uh, high-end cars right now for a lot of add-on add features, you still use microcontrollers. So that is the use of a microcontroller. Now, uh, now I, before we move further, uh, I would like to show you a small video about uh, the working of a microcontroller I mean, how, uh, in a small project. Okay, now this is a project that's done by one of our students. Now, what is, a, what is the use of this project? So you have an LCD here, this is your LCD, which is used to display information. And this log I see here is your microcontroller. Okay. So now what, what these guys have done is they have programmed the microcontroller to calculate the speed of the wheel. Okay. So now this is a wheel. Uh, now here, the white color thing here is a wheel. I, when the video is playing, it'll be, it'll be uh, easy for you to understand. Now, if you notice this, uh, the white color thing there that is rotating is a wheel. Okay. Now, when it rotates, 
the LCD displays what is the speed, rotations per minute, rotations per second. Okay, and then what happens is he kept his hand in front of the sensor, and immediately the wheel stops, and then the robot, the LCD displays how long or how much the robot has traveled. So this is a digital tachometer which tells you the speed and the distance at which a particular device has traveled. Okay, and this is using a microcontroller. Okay, so pretty much you have a lot of applications while using a microcontroller in embedded systems. Okay. So now I hope you get, you have some idea about it. Yes. Can I show a show of hands if you're following me? Can you please raise your hands if you're following me? Just wave to my screen to the screen and tell me that you're following me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Fine. Now, as I was telling, the first thing that uh, we talked about is IoT. Uh, it's a really interesting field where microcontroller plays a really important role there. Second thing that we saw is embedded systems. But again, microcontroller plays a really, really important role. The last thing that we will be seeing is about robotics. Okay, now robotics is a very, very draft field. So, what is a robot? What is robotics? Uh, what is a robot basically? A robot is a particular device that performs a series of complex actions, and you have to program a robot. So, robot can be autonomous. It also can be manual. But even if it's manual, you perform a particular action. Uh, you write a small program to the robot to perform based on the input that they're giving. Okay, so now I would, uh, with, instead of me telling you about what is robots, I, there are a few videos that you can see. I'll also tell you about what, how robot microcontrollers are used in these, these robots. Okay, so now this is a small video about a first year student uh, of us who's building a robot which you can control using a mobile. Okay, now again, if you notice here, This is the, this long IC is a microcontroller. Now, what he is doing here is he is controlling the robot using a mobile phone over Bluetooth. Okay. Now, over Bluetooth, he communicates, he sends an information. So that is using UART communication. And the Bluetooth device gets it, transmits it to the microcontroller. The microcontroller in turn reads the value and then sends the data to the IC motor driver here through the input output peripheral and then the robot works. So this is one of the small applications and this is pretty easy to build as long as you are very familiar with IO ports and as long as you're familiar with a few communication protocols. So these are few important things that you need to know in a microcontroller. Now, next video that something that again is built uh, by our students is uh, a robot which imitates his hand. So he moves a particular finger automatically here. If you see the robot bends his finger. You get it, right? Now, now this is something very interesting. And this is actually easy to build if you again know about microcontroller. So this again here on the breadboard is a microcontroller. He has connected a lot of uh, servo motors, which is another type of motor, but still you have to you know about peripheral devices. And once you don't do this, you have sensors in every finger here. Every finger has a sensor. Uh, it's called a flex sensor, which again gives analog input. That is given to the microcontroller. And the microcontroller processes it, processes it and converts it into digital signals using ADC. And then it... Uh, make sense of the data and then get, transfer the information to your servo motors. So this is one of the applications of a microcontroller in robotics. Now, robotics is not just limited to these things. Okay, uh, I will also like to show you a few other important, uh, very nice videos about uh, how, uh, I mean, robot, what are actually robots, what are advanced robots. Okay, just take a look at it. And end of the video, let me know if you like the videos and then I'll proceed further, okay?
Is the audio audible? So now, was the audio, I mean, was the video audible? Yes, show of hands. Okay, did you like the video? Okay, thank you. Now, Okay. Okay, now, so these are very interesting videos of robots which are developed across the world. Uh, now, and all these robots are, can be done by using microcontrollers. So they have, they have motors, the quadcopter, the drones that you have, they have motors, uh, they have sensors. Uh, so they have motors uh, and they also have sensors. They also communicate to each other saying, okay, at this time I need to do this and things like that. So all these can be built using microcontrollers. Okay, and in fact, for more advanced uh, actions where it's time dependent or when it's processing speed is like really high uh, and that's when you go for microprocessors. Okay. Now, a small question. Uh, now, I've been talking about microcontrollers uh, in embedded systems and pretty much you guys were like, uh, you, you were able to relate it to real time devices like my, uh, washing machines and things like that. Uh, and I also talked about IoT. We, I showed you a small example about how it's there in our real life right now. Uh, can you tell me this? Uh, can I answer this question? Are robots part of your life today? If yes, you can show me your hands. Okay. Do you think robots are part of your life today? Okay. Now, what I mean robots are part of your life today is, uh, so for example, all, I mean, uh, pretty much I assume that uh, today, every morning, uh, let's say nine o'clock your college starts, 8.30 or nine o'clock your college starts. So uh, a person who comes to the college gets up around six o'clock, seven o'clock, uh, depends. And then uh, you get ready and then you catch a college bus or from your, uh, you have your breakfast, you catch a college bus, or you come by a regular means of transport and you come to your college by 8.30. And then you sit through the entire lessons, you go through my webinars like this. Uh, sometimes it's really tiring, you yawn in the session, and then you go for lunch. Again, after lunch, you have this uh, uh, period where you feel like a lot of sleepy, drowsy. So you somehow manage to sit through it, go back home, Facebook, WhatsApp for some time, uh, chat with your friends, go out, have dinner, and then go to bed. So now, this is your regular life routine, right? Now, in this entire routine, do you think robots played a part in your life? If yes, show of hands. Huh, nice. So I can see a lot of people telling, yes, robots are part of my life. Now, great. Now, for people who told robots are not part of my life, or I do not know whether robots are still part of my life, uh, I would like to show you something really interesting, few things that it will uh, something that you might have not seen earlier. Okay, for people who have seen, 
just uh, show me your hands that you have seen this. People are not seeing it. Anyway, I'll tell you about it. Okay, no, not now. I'll show you a few things, and that's when you can show me your hands if you've seen it or not. Okay, okay. Be ready for it. Something really surprising coming up. How many of you have not seen all these? Have you seen this in your life, in your regular activities? These four things that shown on the video uh, screen. Yes. So pretty much people have not seen this. Okay. Now, for people who have not had any of these, like dairy milk, Oreo, Coca Cola, or any other era. Uh, Aerated drinks or lays or something like that. If you have not eaten it uh, in the past one week or the past one month, uh, what I would like you guys to do is, people have eaten it. You can just look at the person who was told that I have not had any of these, and tell them welcome to 21st century. Uh, this some these are few pleasures that we generally have in the 21st century. Anyway, so now. All these device, all these things that you have in your regular life, in your regular, uh, uh, from morning to evening, or in your as a snacks or anything like that. Uh, how how do you think these are manufactured? So if you take a look at it, uh, imagine or take Oreo for that example. Uh, if they do the testing that like they show in ads, open, lick, eat, and then close it and tell, wow, it's nice. So will you like to have that? No. Basically, no, right? So, or if you take lace for that example, if it's like the look, uh, if they prepare lace, uh, like they're doing the hot chop, hot chips in the end of the street, like a big fat or now with a ton onion sitting there frying the egg, uh, potatoes, and then a small uh, guy there taking it, putting it in five rupee, putting five rupees in small packet, blowing air, and then sealing it until five rupees packet. So, if that happens, will you be will you be happy to eat it? No, right? So now, what happens is for manufacturing all these things, robots are being used. Okay, so that is how robots are also being a part of your life. A small video that will tell you how robots are used in the industry. Coca-Cola. There may be no other product that reaches more of mankind. It all starts with a secret formula. Coke sends that secret formula to hundreds of almond factories around the world. Those factories need containers by the millions. The value is staggering. The speeds are blinding. Coca-Cola in easy reach of nearly every human being on Earth, you need ultimate factories. This machine holds 20 rolls, each making two bottles. Every revolution produces 40 bottles. As the preforms enter the mold, you can't see inside. But here's what happens. The heated preform is loaded. Then a metal rod drops down and stretches it. Low pressure air expands the preform. Then a high pressure burst of air inflates the preform until it hits the edge of the mold. The edge of that mold is icy cold because of the chilled water being piped into it. It's that cold metal that sets the bottle shape. It takes a full revolution of the wheel to fill a bottle. Coca-Cola going in is ice cold. As the bottles come off the valve, they're depressurized. Even so, the beverage seems to want to spew out as the filler resumes its top speed of 800 bottles a minute. The best thing to contain the pressure? Cats. Lots of them.
Now, so is this very clear about the role of robots in your regular life? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, are you familiar with? Are you? Do you agree that robots are part of your regular life right now? Okay. Good. So now, so this is this is a small example of flex picker which is used in uh, uh, celebrations. The chocolates that they have. So basically, what happens here is this is another robot. Uh, what does this robot do? This is called this is a vacuum. Okay. So now this suction pump here uh, sucks the celebration chocolate there. Okay. And it sucks using a vacuum and then places it in a particular place where you want to uh, in the boxes and then it goes for packaging. Imagine, I mean, and since the production is, has to be really fast and it has to uh, meet all the uh, uh, supply demands, what happens is you use robots to make sure the productions are really fast. Okay. So now these are robots that, which are used in the industries and certain portions of all these things use microcontrollers to make it work. Okay. Now, so I, so one thing I, first thing I've covered is what is a microcontroller? What are things that you need to know in a microcontroller? Uh, then I covered about applications of microcontroller in three different domains. And last thing is if you need to pursue a career in any of these three domains, uh, for example, uh, be it IOT or be it embedded systems for that matter or robotics, something that you guys, everyone has to be really familiar with. An engineer has to be really familiar with is the first thing which most of engineering students hate, or most of at least DC, AAA, mechanical, or other students hate, is the first point that's highlighted and read there. Okay? Can everyone read it loud? loud? I mean, I do not want to hear it, but if you can read it loud, there's something which is really, really important for every engineering student more C programming skills. Okay, so now this programming skill is something which is very very important for every engineer to make sure you have a good career in engineering. Now, something which we hated in engineering college uh, or in the college, I mean, pretty much most of you, you can also relate to this, uh, that you are not a big fan of C programming uh, because it, it looked complicated or it was really difficult to understand in the first year when it was taught. Uh, or you're from a biology background. So those are not the excuses that you have to give if you need to become an engineer. This, the one thing that you need to know is go hard on, for, I mean, take a look at C programming, try understanding it and make sure it works. For a small example, I am also, I also did my uh, 12th standard in Biomax group. Okay, so I was also a biology background. I was not in the computer science background. And programming is not actually that difficult like how you see it in college. Okay, so programming is very, very important if you need a career in engineering. Okay, now apart from that, if you need to uh, show a career or build, start building products which are uh, related to microcontrollers or go into careers in companies or working in micro microcontrollers, one thing that you need to start working on is pick one microcontroller at least. Okay, it can be anything, 8051, it can be Atmel uh, microcontroller, it can be a PIC microcontroller. And make sure you re, you work on input output parts. You work on analog to digital conversion using the microcontroller, and then you at least work on two communication protocols out of the three that I told you. It can be either I square C or UART. It can be either SPI or UART. So work on at least two communication protocols. And the last thing you need to work on is timers and counters, which is. Uh, out of the four things that I've told you, time and counters comes as a lost priority. But you have to make sure you take one microcontroller at least, learn how to read a data sheet, and then make this work. So this is something which you need to know for sure if you need a proper career in embedded systems or working on microcontrollers. Now, in the industry, to give you a small idea, pretty 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 much a lot of companies in this domain work in the Linux operating platform. So they ask you whether you have previous experience in C programming and as your career grows like three years, four years into your engineering career, then they are start looking for people who work on Linux. So the first two things are really important for any person to become a very good engineer. First thing is strong C programming skills. Second thing is input output parts 
and log to digital conversion, com two communication protocols, and then time motion controls of one microcontroller. And then followed by, if you have time, and if you are really interested, you can also start looking at how to work on a Linux OS. Now, uh, to, I mean, I understand there's something with a lot of you might fight, be frightened and tell, okay, there's something which I would not like to do or because it's really complicated. It is actually not complicated. It's something very simple if you start fast or it will take at least a C programming skills comes by practice and you need not go to, uh, you need not try to do the way you have been taught in your regular college. You can also start looking at, uh, you can read uh, books on C programming. You can uh, look at online platforms which teach you online courses in C programming, or you can just start working on a microcontroller and learn C programming as you build further. Okay. Now, do not worry about how if you are going to approach for a company for embedded careers. Companies do not expect a lot from you. One thing they would ex they know your freshers. Okay, so they have a leeway. They they don't expect like you need to be a really good engineer or something. What they want is some fundamental idea about whatever it whatever these things are. Okay. Now to give you a small idea about a few companies which are in embedded systems, I understand a lot of you have uh, are, are telling uh, IoT. Uh, sorry, uh, IT is the best way to go because I earn money using it. I earn a lot of money. People who go for the core do not earn money. That is completely a wrong idea of things. The lot of uh, MNCs in the embedded system domain itself, core core engineering MNCs, uh, and they also pay you salaries that is equivalent to IT. And working in a core company, being an engineering graduate gives you that special feeling when you actually start working and get an output, work on hands-on, work on work, work on an engineering project. So that is something which will actually be a really good experience if you start working in companies. HCL has really good opportunities in embedded systems. They also have IT, IT sector, but they also have really, really good uh, uh, embedded, embedded engineer, uh, engineering division. Robert Bosch is one of the leading companies in embedded systems. Wipro also has a really good uh, uh, M uh, embedded systems domain. Honeywell uh, works on uh, also automation, they also work on automation. Intel, you should already know about developing protocol, de developing processes. Nokia has recently uh, uh, merged with Alcatel Lutin, uh, Lucent. Now, I understand a lot of people would tell, okay, Nokia, we're developing only phones uh, and they are not a company right now. Uh, that's something which is a assumption that's a lot of the people there. Of course, they, are, uh, they have been bought up by Microsoft in, a, in the phone segment, but they have a lot of other uh, interesting stuff going on in the field of IoT right now recently. So Nokia Alcatel is also a really good place to work in. Saskin is also a really good place to work in when it comes to embedded systems. Uh, Saskin works on communication protocols uh, like giving 3G, uh, 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 3G uh, communication protocols and things like that, which also has some amount of embedded systems involved in, that, in the companies. Now, I put all these companies just to tell you that they still have freshers. They hire freshers. They have placement drives that happens in their in in different different places where they hire freshers, and it's not really difficult to get in as long as you have a good GPA or a, a good CGPA for in your college, a decent CGPA, and a very good programming skills and some experience in the microcontroller domain. So if if you have that when you write out of college, then you are a really good candidate to work on this. Now. There are a few people who would tell, okay, I, I want to do research. I want to work on, work in a company where I can learn better, go for masters, work for two years, one or two years and go for a masters. For people like that, the startup sector has really, really amazing uh, things that are happening right now. These are a few startups that are based out of IIT Research Park. Pi Beams, uh, it works on uh, solar powered auto, uh, solar powered vehicle. Aether also has recently, uh, uh, raised a lot of uh, funds and then they are uh, releasing their electric scooter. Uh, Signy is also working on solar power. Enability is de work developing devices for differently able people. Vitronics also is a part of embedded systems uh, where they uh, pretty much deal with wireless communication protocols. Planus, they have marine robots that is underwater robots. Airwood has dro uh, they developed drones where they go and collect data from different environment and then make sense of data. So these are a few companies, few startups in the embedded system domain. There are a lot of other startups. Now, a few startups here in Research Park is what I right now told you about. Okay. Now, 
so this is pretty much a career lot there are a lot of career opportunities you just you just have to know very few basics and be strong in a few things and you can always have a good career in embedded systems or robotics for the matter now for people who are looking for starting up or people are looking to start kick start in learning about this we have a small program called kazan robotics program what we do is we have different levels of program uh, but we deal with how do we program a microcontroller how do i use analog to digital conversion how do i connect input output parts how do i communicate using uart communication so these are a few uh, we have basic courses we have advanced course for people who have completed the basics and then followed by that we have a lot of elective courses you can also go to a website to have any info uh, to get any information if you want okay now people who want to work on microcontrollers people who want to participate in competitions work on their own projects are the right sort of people who actually can come and join the case and robotics program uh now an outline of what case and robotics program there it has consists one program is six months program where two months of intensive class where it's a class two months you have classes on weekends not in regular days you have classes on weekends or uh, there is on saturdays and sundays depending on the college uh, so generally we have a lot of affiliation colleges here in chennai and in if requested colleges from different uh, cities also call us and we connect the batches in their college during the weekends and uh, after the intensive class we have four months of guidance program where a person who is interested in doing a project in any field we will be able to guide them uh, either by phone or email or by over a call or coming to that particular place so we do so it's a six months uh, curriculum program now it's also a certified program so uh, people who come uh, who finish the program get certified by lema labs and uh, iit madras alumni association uh, so this is me it's been nice having i mean giving you some information about it what i would like is if you have any questions just let me know i'll be able to help i'll help uh, i'll clarify those information and also if you can also get in touch with me if you, if you need if you have some questions later or if you need some help you can also get in touch with me by by my email id or my number that's given here i'm open to questions right now great sir uh, thank you so much sir uh, for a wonderful insight on the subject uh, i'm sure the students enjoyed the session uh, let's open this forum for the session of the session so i would request all the colleagues uh, if you have any questions just ask the students to come in front of the camera and ask the question or you can put the question on the chat box uh any questions from lc uh, jain college i'm i'm, I'm putting you on a, on, the, on the mute mode uh, kindly i would request the teachers to uh, take charge of it if any student have any question uh, they can just come forward towards the camera and ask the question lc jain college you are on the unmute mode any questions from raisoni college of engineering any any question from raisoni college of engineering i think there are questions coming in Anjuman College, Nagpur. You have a question. Okay. Uh, can I go ahead and answer that question? Sure, sir. Okay. Now, question once again and ask the question. That would be great because other colleges will uh, get to know about the question. Sure. Okay. Now, the question that I got from Anjuman College of Nagpur. Uh, is how can we use iot with microcontroller uh, okay now as i told you earlier uh, 
this is a fitness band okay now i explain how this has something to do with iot okay now uh, iot is generally internet of things that means i can communicate or i can connect over internet to a different domain now how do i connect over internet using a microcontroller and that is a i think that is a question that you try to ask okay now con connecting over internet is a uh, basically another communication protocol okay so what you do is you have a wifi device or a wifi modem and you try to create your own server in your system so you, what you do is your uh, you cannot run a server in your in a microcontroller because microcontroller has a really small memory so what you do is you connect your microcontroller to your laptop or you connect your microcontroller to a particular uh, a microprocessor or something which has more uh, space or more memory and then you run the server on the laptop or on the pc or on the microprocessor okay so a server is nothing but a center where a lot of different clients like a lot of uh, so this is a client okay uh, in, in when you talk in in terms of networks any device which connects communicates to a particular server is called a client okay now your server can run on a mic uh, in your, in your laptop and your microcontrollers are going to be clients so microcontroller connect to a sensor and the sensor sends information to the microcontroller the microcontroller in turn will ping the sensor a server okay now server is like you have to use c programming basically c programming using a small uh, wifi module uh, which is easily available uh, you have different uh, sorry you have different uh, microcontrollers like uh, there's a microcontroller called esp or uh, esp okay i'll just write it down here this is uh, in the chat box i'll just write it down for you to understand so esp is one segment of microcontrollers which comes with inbuilt wifi into it okay so you just have to connect uh, it to the wifi using your uh, ssid so for example you're connected to a particular ssid called uh, anjuman college of nagpur so that is your router's name so you connect there and the router is already connected to internet so the microcontroller the esp will send the sensors information to the server and whatever the server a uh, server will ping back so you can send uh, information from the server to the microcontroller and the microcontroller perform that action okay so that is the role of a microcontroller in your iot iot you can have different types of servers you can have uh, a linux based server you can have windows based server you can have a lot of servers uh, and you can choose any server that you want to do but iot uh, the microcontroller cannot be used to host a server it can be used a part to ping as a client to ping the server with information that is required for making sense of okay so like this microcontroller here will ping the data of my proximity sensor of the sensor that tracks my sleep the sensor that tracks what are the calls that's coming and then it will send the data over bluetooth to my mobile the mobile will in turn send it to a server which is hosted by mi this is mi band so it's hosted by mi the mi will in turn the mi server will send in turn data to the app that's there in my mobile a uh, data which will it will make sense of all the data and then it will send it back to this device or it'll send it'll display the information my mobile so that is how you use a microcontroller in the in iot i hope i answered your question if i answered your question do let me know or if you have more questions about whatever answer you can also ask me i think that answers okay. uh, the question uh, thank you yeah so uh, dear colleges i think uh, we have to respect masters time so if you have any questions uh, you can directly uh, write uh, your question to mr pawan's uh, email id which is there on the screen and uh, i'm sure he'll be happy to help you yeah sure you can also contact me my number that's there or uh, i'll be available I, uh, i'll be available in this number always and also my email id uh, uh, is pawan@lemalabs.com you can communicate to any means and i'll always be ready to help you out thank you so much sir thank you so much once again for joining in uh, mr pawan uh, i believe the students benefited immensely from your session uh, we really appreciate your effort uh, can we have a round of applause for mr pawan thank you thank you thank you
I'm sure uh, it was a great learning experience for all the students. I would request all the students to be seated. There is a short announcement how uh, you can have the certificate for the session. Uh, just be seated. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pavan, for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear students, uh, this session wouldn't have been possible without the help of Simply Learn. Simply Learn, a company wanting to skill India through 400 plus courses on offer. Let's have a look at what Simply Learn has to offer. ये क्या लगता है आपको ऑफिस ये शतरंज है और यहाँ सबकी एक ही इच्छा है राजा रानी के दिन तक पहुँचने की पर सब किस्मत की बालू से ये आनंद है सिंपली लर्न डॉट कॉम से सर्टिफिकेशन कर रहा है बिग डेटा डिजिटल मार्केटिंग प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट प्लानिंग की है अपने करियर को आगे बढ़ाने की इस पर तुम मत So, so dear students, uh, now since uh, we have Simply Learn with us, Simply Learn is offering all the students who have been attending Vbind session flat thirty percent off on any course that they wish to attend. Use the coupon code as Vbind thirty. I would repeat, it is Vbind thirty. Now let me show you how you need to download the certificate. As a student, you need to go onto the sign up button. You can see sign up as student. You have to register yourself. You will get a confirmation mail or an OTP. Once that is done, you need to sign in on our website. I'll show you how uh, the sign in works with a demo login. Yes, now you're logged in. Uh, you can see there is a certificate tab on uh, the left hand side. On the right hand side, yes, here you can see all the master classes that we have conducted till now. Yes, here you can see a microcontroller session. You have to select that. You'll be able to see all the colleges who have attended the session with the department name and the faculty name. Students need to select their respective faculty name and the department from your, say for example, SB Jain College. And you'll find a question in next five minutes. So there'll be a question, a quiz question for from the session itself for the students. Once you answer that question, uh, you'll be, uh, your certificate would be pending for approval from the faculty side. This is how it would look like. You can see just uh, against the rapid prototyping session, you can see pending for approval. This is how it would be. Once it is uh, approved from your faculty member, it would be like something which is just opposite to uh, object-oriented programming. You can see something across object-oriented programming. It is a download button. Once you click on that, this is how you will get the certificate. The certificate would be in the name of Mr. Pawan and the company name that is Lemma Labs and that would be blessed by Simply Learn. So this is how you need to do students. Uh, you have to register yourself on our website vbind.in, log in as student and claim for the certificate for the session that you attended. I hope you all uh, enjoyed the session and wish to see you uh, once again for Vbind session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a such, such a wonderful audience. Thank you so much.